This, 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 this is the Alrighty here, I am with Doug. What do you do for a living? I make YouTube car reviews and I run a car auction website called Cars and Bids. There we go. Oh, it's, it's, it's hearing your voice like next to me <laughs> is, is, do people say that to you often? Um, Yes, they do. And I have a similar feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm more behind the camera. So. I, the other day I met the guys at Throttle House and I sat down with them and I was like, you're famous. And they were like, you're also, fa but I was like, it's so weird to see people, you know, in the flesh, in the flesh. Yeah, it is weird. It is uncanny. Like we step out of my car and you're like, Hey, what's up? And I was like, Oh, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> even though uh, you knew it was happening. At all. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to rip off the bat here. I want to know how many cars have you had to take a guess that you've reviewed in your life? Oh man. Okay. I've done, we start, I started doing car reviews. Do you have the number or something? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like looking off oh, to terrified. the, um, I started doing car reviews in 16 and so, I do two a week. I don't know, probably 800, 700? 800. 600? So, you got to have... to fact check me on this and I'm going to be way off. But I think it's a, it's a lot. Okay. That, that is quite Many a lot. Many hundreds. And yeah. you have to coordinate with all these people. They, like, email you. You set it up. Yeah. Do you have any horror stories or crazy stories from all those 700 people? You would think that I would, but, like, no. Every time I've shown up to shoot a car, I've shot it. Like, I've never had a situation where I've shown up and then it didn't start oh. or the dude flaked it when I got there ever? or any, no one's it's ever flaked. never happened. I've had a couple cars oh. break down like at the end of the shoot. Okay. But, but not before, but not like in the middle of it or before I got everything that I needed. And other than that, I mean the, the horror stories are like when they cancel the day before or okay. like when it rains, but that's like kind of life. Like I don't even wow. think that's, as, but if it's, I've never had it happen though where I showed up and like there was a real situation going that's on. That's interesting. I guess one time I went to Australia <laughs> and one time and they had promised me that I could like drive some cars and I showed up and they were like, yeah, you can't, you can, can't drive them. You just oh, have to. Oh, because you always drive the car to typically the unless it's like a pre-production car or something like that. Yeah. So that was annoying but I happened to be in Australia anyway so it was okay. <laughs> oh, okay. You like fly all the way out there to film like some rare I would, car. If I had gone just for that I would have been so mad. But we were, I was going to New Zealand for my honeymoon. So like oh. three days before I just went out to Australia and the video still did well, even though I didn't drive the car and I got to go to Melbourne, which is a great city. That's so very it worked cool. out. Everything we want to go. We want to go. But, uh, <laughs> so like, have you ever had like a car that you've just been dying to get, but you have not been able to get your hands on at all? Um, not really anymore. Like okay. I've shot pretty much all the cool, not new stuff. Okay. The the stuff that I'm like dying to get is like brand new stuff that's coming out that like I want to be the first, you know, like okay. it's that kind of stuff now. And yeah. in those those situations, you don't really have. There's not like a benefit to you can't like get earlier than the manufacturer will allow. Yeah. You, you know what I mean. And so like yeah, I would kill to review any of these crazy new cars that are you know C eight Z O six before anybody else. But that's kind of how it is now. Okay. All the older stuff like the iconic type cars. Yeah. I've already kind of shot most of them. The only exception is I would love to shoot some um, like really crazy concept cars, like 80s and 90s oh, concept cars yeah. that were just stupid. And those are hard to track down. Have you ever but, shot like with a vector? What do they call the yeah, vector? The vector W8. I did shoot one of those like five years ago and it was a ridiculous experience in every way. Oh, what, was it white? It was red okay, that's cool. um, in that's New cool. Jersey. There's like 20 of them, but there's like a white one in Detroit that gets around. There's a white one in LA, right? Oh yeah, gets yeah. It's at the Peterson, I think. Yeah, yeah. I but think, yeah. that car has like, like fighter jet displays in it like oh. like it literally has like the interior displays are screens from a fighter jet from that era so it's like oh you know gosh. orange pixelated dots you know oh. it's, it's, it was it was really the video was like an hour long of all That's the crazy so stuff. cool. I gotta watch that. So, have you ever crashed any of these cars or like dented them? I don't know if you know, like off the record, you know? No, no. On the record. On the record or off. Oh, yeah. I have never damaged a car that I have filmed with. I'm trying to think if there's ever been like any incidents. Any like, because I'm like going to, I have a car for one day and I go over a curve right. and I kind of, I mean, I feel like that's kind of like on the plastic sometimes you can't, I unless you're the am, master. I'm just really careful. Okay. And I actually don't love being really careful with other people's cars, which is why I kind of treat my car, especially my daily driver car, kind of like crap. Because I just oh, feel okay. like I want one car that I don't have to worry about all the time. But um, I'm, 
I've never had anything. I mean, I have insurance in case it does happen. Oh, but okay. I've never had in all the crazy cars, all the years, I've never had any like damage or anything. I If there was a really? juicy story, it would be awesome to tell it. <laughs> wow. But like, like, I, I just swear told. there isn't. Like Even as I think back on like little stuff, there's there's really never been like any Very impressive. incidents Eight, yeah, seven, so far. We'll so you're the master of like gauging like if there's like a hill or something or like a curb. Yeah. You, you know, you just I've know. I've gotten used. One of the things that benefited me in 08, before I ever did this, in 08, 09, I I worked at um, a Ferrari dealership. And so I, okay. I, like as a lot porter, like I drove the cars around and to the customers and all that. Oh, cool. And yeah, it was, an, it was a dream job Sick. for like a 21 year old. But yeah. at the, but at the, I kind of learned like angles and stuff from that. Like you have to take curbs and yeah. driveways at angles. You have to be super careful and go slow. And from that job, I learned that. And so like once I started doing this job, I already kind of knew the basics of that stuff. And so mm. it never really was like a, a problem. Okay. Basically. Yeah. Gotcha. That, that makes sense. It's like you're training your whole life for right, this moment. Right. I'm still, to be clear, I'm still terrified. Like okay. everybody, I'll never forget. I shot the F40. That was one of the first like really expensive cars that I had done at that time. It was you worth, drive it. Like, yeah. That was, that was summer of 17. So it was almost six years ago, but that was one of the craziest cars. And I drove it and everybody was like, was, at the time it was worth a million dollars. Now there were two and a half, but at the time yeah. it was worth a million dollars. And I couldn't conceptualize like a million dollar car. Crazy. And so I drove it and whatever, did the whole review. And people afterwards were like, that must have been so cool. You drove the F40. And I was like, the best part of that whole thing was at the end of the day when I gave the keys back and I was not responsible for it anymore. Like, oh my you're gosh. just scared the whole time. Pretty that much. is terrifying. Oh my yeah. gosh. Do you have any, like, if you like were, were to have one car brand, you'd say that is your favorite and the most overrated. I don't know. I don't know if you'd be oh, willing to share that. My favorite, if you look at my car purchase history, mm -hmm. my favorite is probably Mercedes Benz. I've owned the most Mercedes Benz cars of anything. Okay. But I would also argue that's because they make like such a wide and varied lineup. Like right now I have both a Mercedes Benz family station wagon with three row seating and a Mercedes Benz convertible SUV. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, you can't really do that in a lot of brands, but yeah, truthfully yeah. I have owned 35 this is number 35 what and i've and they've all it's like been incredibly varied i've had japanese cars i have right now i have a japanese car an american car a german car like i have had the gamut i've owned korean cars i had a kia stinger as a Whoa. daily driver for a year um i love those they yeah seem cool i have I british cars right now too like all of it and so i don't really feel like there's any one brand that i'm loyal to at all like okay. zero it's just i'm only loyal to cars not brands gotcha okay and as far as overrated oh, most overrated car brand that's hard there's definitely not the worst cars yeah. right it's a good question most overrated the, yeah. the nuance is good um i don't I can't think of like a, a specific brand that is entirely overrated okay. or the most. Maybe a car, specific car. I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. No, no. I think it's a good question. Yeah. Um, I think personally, these some of these older Porsches that are selling for crazy money. Oh, okay. Interesting. You know, these 70s Porsches that are like 100, 200 grand. When I was a kid, they were like $12,000 yeah. used cars. It is crazy. I think to yeah. myself, is that really worth that? And the driving experience. I mean, these cars have 100 and some horsepower. Like... That feels yeah. a little overrated yeah. to me. Now all these Porsche guys would get on here and be like, "You're wrong. It's so pure." It is the old but Porsche me, guys. Yeah, it's a little. It's more than a little overrated. I think it's a lot overrated. <laughs> the cult of Porsche. I mean, I just bought a Porsche, but the cult of Porsche is unlike anything else. Like yeah. BMW and Mercedes are like fighting, and then Porsche just like we don't. We it don't. I associate. swear it didn't used to be that way, but I think Ferraris got kind of inaccessible, and they got this rep that they're owned by like entertainers and celebrities as opposed to like car enthusiasts. Yeah. And so car enthusiasts have gone after Porsche much more in the last ten years than ever before in my whole life. Gotcha. And so there's become this like groundswell. I mean, this car has gone crazy in value. A lot of old Porsches have, because there's become this like desire to have all these Porsches. And some of yeah. them I think are totally worth it, mm -hmm. and some of them I think aren't. <laughs> What's your favorite Porsche? Uh, yeah. this I think is my favorite car. So definitely. Oh, my okay. Porsche as well. I was gonna ask. Well, and you just bought it, right? Yeah, like last week it was delivered, so it's uh, oh. it'll, it'll be an interesting ownership experience. That is so cool. Uh, so you're like the first person who's my friends have seen it, my wife, and then you. I'm honored. Oh my god, I'm literally on my way driving here to film this, and I see you post it. I was like, oh right. my gosh! I was like I gotta get this up before we do this podcast in the garage. Yes, <laughs> people will see it. And for those listening, it's a Carrera GT, Carrera right? GT. Right we'll behind him. Yeah. That's great. How many miles? Uh, I hit 10,000 miles on Saturday. So okay. You had a little party. But it helped. Us. I started at 99.50, so it's not like I really did anything oh, okay. <laughs> or earned this. Gotcha, but gotcha. I look forward to many more. Okay, that's amazing. Congrats. Congrats. On Thank the you. We'll throw a party. Yeah, uh. with a cake. Uh, Ferrari or Lamborghini, one has to go. 
all history, every car that's ever been made is in the running here, but one brand is wiped off the face of the earth. Uh, of the two, wipe off Lamborghini for sure. Okay. There are some old Lambos and current Lambos that I love, but mm. Ferrari... Yeah, I'm, I've like historically been a Ferrari guy. I love F40s. I, I'm a, I'm a big, big Ferrari fan. Okay, I'd, I'd probably agree with that. Yeah, I think Lamborghini. It's just like recently with the whole Ferrari. Like you're right. Like they have their hands and everything. And it's it, uh, gotten a little out of hand. Yeah, they're suing people. But, right, right. Oh god. Yeah, and Lamborghini. <laughs> but historically, kinda... I think Ferrari has made just like way more special and way more desirable cars in my mind. Hundred percent, I agree. And I'm a Lamborghini Countach. I know, I know it's hard to drive. And it's maybe not one of the, it's probably awful. You're tall. But as far as uh, like aesthetics go, it is my favorite looking yes. car. That, the Diablo SC30 is one of my favorite. Obviously, the Mura is like, you know, world famous. Yes. Mercies are amazing. Yes. Um, but Ferrari is just Ferrari in my mind. They, have, they just had more history. More. And yeah. it, like the old ones are crazy. Like the old Testarossas, the 250s. Right. There's they, so many cool cars. They're, yeah. inc they're incredible. Do you ever get pressure from people like dealerships or whatnot, whoever give, gives you cars to like make the review good? That's a great question that not enough people ask because I think a lot of people do get that pressure. Um, personally, I don't care. <laughs> like I'm <Savage>. all set. <laughs> like you can, you can never talk, you can get mad at me and never talk to me again and I am just fine. So I don't care if people say stuff like that. There was a time early on when I had to be careful about what I would say. And that beginning. Yeah. But like, now that like I, my following is big enough and we just took this big investment in cars and bids about this car. Like I don't really care what people say to me. I'm going to yeah. do what I want to do. And that's going to be that. So with individuals, do you ever have anyone that's like reached out I to you? I've had some people who I film their cars, not entirely thrilled with the review views okay but you know never like it, it's never been anything that's been super important it's actually interesting because the automakers are the least likely to do that so no. i get a lot of press cars from the automakers the automakers know they cannot get away with calling you and like yelling at you yeah you know like you just why did you it. say that they it would it would become a story and they yeah. they want to so when the when you say something bad about a car provided by the automakers they keep it kind of under the like if they're upset okay. they sort of they, they send you like a carefully stew. crafted email and they're like, maybe we can educate you on the benefits of this, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. But like, they don't get like really mad. Yeah. Um, and you would think they would, they're the ones who have the most, like the biggest vested interest in it, mm. but they also have the most to lose if it came out that they like leave you a yeah. cursing voicemail. Like you're so a YouTuber, they're, they're you make a video it. around it's, it. That's, yeah. that's exactly right. And yeah. they know that. So they're cautious about like how they treat not so great reviews. Now it helps, the, I think it really helps that in today's world, most cars are good. Like in the 80s and 90s, there were a lot of bad cars. Okay. Like objectively trash Just cars. bad. <laughs> and now there's okay. like five, right? Like the Mitsubishi Mirage, the Dodge Journey. Like there's a few. But most okay. cars, truthfully, are like pretty good, pretty competitive. And so it's not like you ever have to be really that negative and risk that kind of interaction. Okay. What would you say is the worst car ever made? Uh, as far as reliability, aesthetics. It's tough to say ever made, but in terms of cars that I've reviewed, which is a lot of them, <laughs> um, the Izetta was an utter disaster. The Izetta. BMW Izetta. I reviewed a Soviet car, which was a, a mess. Um, <laughs> there's the uh, there's a few that on I the can... market today, like modern cars. Do you have any like just stand out as just like they're just bad? Yeah, I mean the Mitsubishi Mirage is terrible. I think okay. that's still in production. I saw one the other day with templates from a Mitsubishi dealer. So, oh, the Dodge Journey, which I think is now out of production, is a terrible car. Okay. Um, there are a few like truly awful cars. Base models of some cars are like really like depressingly decontented, like in okay. a bad way. But I, I truly think like it's hard to make like a truly bad car now. Competition okay. is so significant that if you tried. It wouldn't succeed. Like, no, it, it, there's just too many cars. Um, even like Kias and Hyundai's, which were forever like the scapegoat of the industry, are now like they're frankly great. they're all pretty good. On, on the Korean cars, what do you think of like the whole Korean car? Go like they've been switching it up like crazy. Hyundai yeah. right now is out of control. Yeah, no, they're make they make great cars. Kia. They what do. about Genesis too? Genesis. All of those brands like make great cars and. They're just all like super, super competitive at the Japanese store. I mean, the Telluride, the Kia Telluride, and the Hyundai Palisade are probably like the hottest, like mid-sized family SUVs right now, which is a big deal because that's yeah. like the hottest segment in the whole car they industry. They look hot too. They like, look they, cool. They, they totally look good. Which for family SUVs, did you ever think you'd say that about like a mom car? Like, yeah. oh, it looks good. The Prius too. Have you? Oh, <laughs> you did a review on the Prius, or oh, yeah. no, you were talking. Did you I do did one? a review on the new Prius. It blew up beyond my wildest dreams. Yeah. But that car has this crazy look, this crazy aesthetic that like looks good. People are like into. They're like, oh. Okay. I mean, like if it wasn't a Prius, I'd be like, that's a normal look. Like, good. But right. the fact that it went from like 
Prius, right. like looking like eh. To... Yeah, it still drives kind of like eh, but at least okay. it looks good. We'll get to experience it sitting in the back of an Uber. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'll be. It, it kind of looks like an EV. Speaking of, do, what do you think of EVs? Um, I generally love EVs, and a lot of car enthusiasts are not EV fans. But totally. I think like the future is clear. Mm -hmm. This is where it's going to go. I'm like super into EVs. I think a lot of them are great. I think um, like, and also it's like in, ignited a whole new group of car enthusiasts who I don't think existed before. Totally. Like totally. Tesla, for as much as car enthusiasts kind of butt heads with Tesla people, at least they're enthusiasts. Like there was yeah. a thought 10 years ago that like the car enthusiasm would kind of, enthusiasm would kind of start to die out. Yeah. And it's, if anything, it's like kind of actually blowing up again now that you have now. all these EVs have unlocked the, the potential to go zero to 60 in two and a half it's, seconds, yeah. which normal people couldn't experience unless they were in a supercar. Now you can do it in a, a yeah. plaid for 89 grand yeah. for a used one. You know, people are like, pretty they, good they, this old man, like shake set cloud. They're just that's like, what the, that's exactly it. It's you know? like these. And you know what? That has happened at every stage in the car business. When computers started to enter into car, when leaded gas went away, when oh, computers air started to enter in cars, air conditioning, yeah. seat belts were like, people oh, were against them. Um, yeah. All of that, you can go through, and automatic transmissions, obviously, as they proliferated, totally, you can go through totally. all of this history and be like, 10 years ago, cars were way better. And yeah. people have been saying that for 100 years. And they don't make them like they used right. to. <laughs> yeah, like I drive a Model 3, I just got a GT4. Oh, I wanted to tell you about that. I got this GT4. I'm just going to like rant for one second here. <laughs> all right, all right. I wait got? a year for a GT4. I'm finally like, oh, I'm going to have a cool car. I've been asking what they do for a living. I'm finally going to get my own. <laughs> I get it uh, exhaust put in. It's wrapped. I'm 10 minutes into driving it. I'm on my way to Malibu to go do a photo shoot unveil with the car. Someone rear ends me at a stoplight. Oh. I'm like, oh my gosh. And now it's back in the How shop. How bad is it? It's not bad. It's not bad. But like, it's still, I still need a new bumper. So it's still back to the shop. Isn't that awful? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just complaining. To what you was right their now. excuse? No, uh, I mean, I got, I got Blake's behind the camera here. I got him, you know, nothing. I'm just sitting there and I just hear, I was like, what? I look back and they're just like, oh, we're sorry. I was like, are you kidding me? So, <laughs> Dude, it, I, that's the thing. It's scary. That's why it's scary to drive like the, as you ratchet it up. Because the thing is, if that was a beater, if it was your Tesla, it'd be yeah. like, yeah, this sucks, but like, whatever. I already did it on my Tesla. I built, like, the side doors. I don't know <laughs> right. if you saw what I rolled. Exactly. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to fix it for it's 9K. Like, whatever. But like, as you start to get cars that you care about more and more, then it starts to matter more, and that's the problem. It's tragic. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. sad. I'm sorry. That's uh, it's okay. Thank you. That means a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna switch to the business side of things here. Talk to me about cars and bids cars and, and how and that. Bids. Yeah, can you say it? Can you say it? Cars. cars and bids? Yes. I can't even hear it now without thinking. <laughs> Please tell me about how you made a shift from making YouTube content and what it's like being like an entrepreneur. Not like you weren't before, but an entrepreneur with a completely different kind of side of business. Yeah, it's an interesting question. And I think it's like an interesting thing that's going to happen over the next 10, 15 years to creators, which mm -hmm. is that like at some point you start to realize that the audience that you have doesn't, like the platform kind of owns them. And so you want to mm. kind of bring them to a place where you can like have more control. And so totally. it hit me three years ago, four years ago. Hey, I need to like, I have this huge audience. They're around. They will not be around forever. Like history has proven that these YouTubers like come, they're hot for a while. And then eventually things start to slow down. Life cycle totally. Yeah. yeah. And so like at some point I need, if I'm not going to, I better, I better bring them somewhere because I might lose them. And so that was totally. kind of the genesis of that. We started that concept in the summer of spring, summer of 19. And then we sort of built out the business, but as, and I tell all the creators I meet, perhaps including you, like this, you have this massive audience, like think about the next steps. And that's mm. one of the things, and it's hard because you're busy creating. And yes. so it's like, I don't have time to like come up with a whole new business also and do that. And I just like, I realized if I didn't do it, it would be a huge mistake. And so that was kind of, it was like kind of a pivot to like, okay, we need to do something where we can have more control and like truly have bring, do something for the audience aside from just weekly YouTube videos where eventually they'll probably lose interest. Yeah. Cause I was reading somewhere the average life cycle of like a YouTuber is like seven ish years or so. It's like average, obviously people have longer, but like, you're totally right. It's like, I look back at some of these guys who were creating big YouTube content, you know, even before I was like 2008, 2009, like some of the OG car YouTuber mm. types and things have slowed way down. And I guarantee that looking back, they wish that they had, had kind of pivoted and like done more, which by the way is why this podcast is a great idea for you oh, to like pivot you. out of like, cause, cause your, what do you do for a living thing is 
uh, incredible and I'm like obsessed with it, but yeah. has a shelf life. Totally. And so it's like, okay, totally. what can I do next? And this is a great idea yes. of where to take it. Yeah, I'm and surprised it has kept on. I tell that every people. I'm like, I don't know how it's still going. I guess people are passing. Right. But, it, but yes, it will die eventually. It will right. die. Right. For and sure. So, and yeah. so and coming in with that knowledge is crucial because I still talk to creators who have huge followings. And they tell me, like, I am so busy creating that I don't really have time to, like, think of what to do next. And I'm thinking to myself, you don't have time not to. Like, you, you, yeah. ha you need to figure something out. And so that was the genesis behind Cars and Bids. We launched it in the middle of COVID and really thought that it would fail, <laughs> but, oh, it, but it turned yeah. out that it was actually the greatest time to launch a car selling thing because the car market took off That's in a way crazy. nobody could have predicted and it worked out. That's the best timing ever of it, all time. It turned for, out. Yeah, that yeah. was amazing. Just timing. admit that you, you knew it. You knew it was coming. I, and wish, you did on purpose. I wish I could say that because it would make me seem even smarter. Yeah. You're like, I, like, I knew it. Yeah. Nobody knew. I mean, you remember spring of 20, like... The, the stock market's all tanked. Yeah. The whole world was going to end, right? Yeah, yeah. And then we launched in June of 20. It wasn't like the very top of peak COVID, but it was still like no one was vaccinated. No one was going outside. No one was going to work. Oh, no, yeah. And it was like, we have to launch this because we've spent so much money developing it. Like we need to start getting some revenue coming Do you have a team? How, many, well, how big is your team? It's now about 20, 20 Whoa, people. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I have a co-founder um, and then we just took this big investment um, and hired a CEO who's kind of running operations now, which is great because I don't, I like, make car videos online. Like I don't, I'm not a CEO, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have a guy who's, who's gonna do this. With like coding and stuff and like designing the website. Yeah, we, had a, like... we hired a designer, we hired engineers and I was really lucky because I, I partnered with a co-founder named Blake who knew how to do that stuff. Oh God. And I had this idea that I would learn to code and make the website myself because I had like bootstrapped my YouTube channel. I was like, yeah. screw it, I can bootstrap this too. Which is in retrospect, insane. Did he reach out to you? It was your a weird situation. He had reached out to me just to like hang out. Um, I get emails and you probably get them too. Like from all people the, like, hey, yeah. you want to grab lunch or whatever? Yeah. And it's That's like, why I ask because all the time you'll get, I get like the business people that go, oh, I'm going to make you, you know. Right. And it's just like, right. and I just like, but I feel like I, for some of them, I need to like perch my ears and just right. get, get, gauge it. Then that's the thing. One of the pieces of advice that I give to people when they ask like how this worked and, and how it worked out is um, answer your own emails. <laughs> because yes. like you don't really know what you're missing if you don't. And I now, now that I've done this, I don't really plan to start another business. I feel like I'm, I'm good. Um, but if I, if I had, I have an assistant now who answers them. But if I had her then and she didn't like send it to me. What if this had never happened? And totally, so like, totally. it's important to like, yeah, look at all the opportunities that come to you and sit there and say, nah, this one's BS form email that they send to a million people. Yeah. Eh, this one maybe is something I, from someone I should take seriously. The domain name, I'm telling you. That's my number one tip for people is that if they have like an at Gmail, not always though, you have an at Gmail, so I'm not, I'm not dissing on the at Gmail, but if you're like a business person that's like I reaching out. totally agree. And you see in Gmail, I'm like, Okay, why don't they have a domain? Totally. But that's if they're going to you. I'm not like, oh, yeah, you have a Gmail. Yeah. I totally agree. <laughs> if, they're, if they really ought to have, yeah. If they're coming at you with a Yahoo account, it's like, it's like $5. You're not it's legit. Like you're not $5 legit. a month. Yeah. Right, right. Exactly. But, so, so he emailed me and then we got together and like had lunch. And then a couple months later, I was like thinking about this idea and I was like, I remember that Blake guy. He does stuff with computers. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> like, he seems smart. Yeah. <laughs> I do my emails too. I do my emails too. I think it's like I, or at least the inbounds. Yeah, it's just so essential. It's essential. You, yeah. you. I, there was a period where I would just get many important emails, and you, you hire someone, and no matter how good they are, they're never going to know this name means something in this industry. Like this yeah. name doesn't. Like this is this is a BS thing. This is worth your time. This isn't. Totally. Like it's important when you're, especially when you're like in your position where you're like kind of in the takeoff phase. Yeah. To like see what's coming in. Is your is your assistant that does the emails? Are they a car person? Not at all. No. Oh, <laughs> that's like that's like Blake who is not a car person. He's getting there. He's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter now, um, but she is my best friend, so she kind of knows like by now like what to look for that I that, that will yeah. like perk up my ears. Basically. It's like a learning process. I feel like. Yeah. yeah. I want to know what you would consider to be the best handling car you've ever driven. That's a good question. The best handling car. Um, Just handling. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably, I gotta think about this. It's kind of a tough. I one. drove a P1 GTR, which I thought was unreal. Whoa! What are this going that for? Three amazing. mil? 
four, five yeah, more? I really wanted one, but it wasn't. That was too much. I, I was told. I was like, oh, I, I got this investment. I can, I get a P1 GTR now, and I, I cannot get a P1 GTR now. They're not. I think they might be like four or five. <laughs> They're insane. Million. And the one I drove was road converted, so like that's another million or something. Oh, Manny um, Koshman. Had, I mean, he just has a P1, but I drove it. Manny, it was crazy. Manny's got all these cool cars. How come we're not Manny? Yeah, man. Manny's yeah. living the life. I go up there to. Like, he's living the life. Anyway, he's living it. He's a madman, honestly. He is a mad. He's one of my. Fa- I meet a lot of rich people doing this as I'm sure you do mm. in various levels and they are various levels of annoying yes yes yeah. and Manny is like the least annoying he's yes. awesome he's a great dude great to hang out with great to talk to truly when you talk to him it seems like he cares to talk to you yes some of these guys will not name names I'm like <laughs> I wanted off the camera <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll talk I'm like you are the worst person I've ever met and after I finish this video I will never see you again <laughs> for um, real but I it's like nice when, when you meet them and they like don't suck yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, best. Hangover Sorry, I, I keep yeah, I keep getting distracted. Forty-eight Pista is up there. The mm. Huracan STO. I just drove the video. Is not up yet, but that car's amazing. Oh, P1 GTR God. cars like that. I think are like really amazing. GT4 actually and Boxster Spider. They're not million dollar cars, mm-hmm. but like they are so good. I often yes. t- I've got a buddy who's got a Boxster yes. Spider, and I often tell him if I didn't have like ego and want like the best car, yeah. I would just bought a Boxster Spider because honestly, it's the same level of thrills as this car. It just doesn't have like the you know the like Prestige. iconic cachet. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Well, this is yeah. This we, has the look. We, me and him went on a drive this weekend, and I like pushed this car as hard as I felt comfortable. Mm. He was with me at every corner. And his oh. Boxster Spider. So, oh, yeah. oh that's so about. sick. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, have you gotten speeding tickets? What? Never like filming or anything like that. How many, how many have you gotten though ever? Oh, a bunch. I drive across the country every summer because um, we spend our summers on the East Coast. And so I typically get one speeding ticket a year oh, God. while I'm on that drive. Do you have a radar detector normally? Like, I in the do. Have, I like run ways. Last speeding ticket I got was 84 and a 75, believe it or not. Oh, what? And I was like, all right, I'll take that ticket. Like I... I can't, I'm not going to do anything. You know, like I'm not yeah. going to slow down from that. But no, at the same time, no. I felt like the cop wasn't in the wrong entirely because like 75 is pretty fat. So like yeah. it was whatever. And I just no, no, I think that's, bull- that's it, bullshit. It was kind of BS, but yeah. like, you know, when you're getting already up to 75, 80, 85 miles an hour, you're going pretty fast. So like some yeah. of the states have kind of a zero tolerance policy, but it was like, geez, okay, nine over. I've, I've never gotten a speeding ticket ever. And I don't know how I've gotten in crazy situations. Maybe it's because I'm white. I don't California, know. But <laughs> it's, I swear it's harder to get tickets in California. There's just so many cars on the road. There are yeah. so many vehicles. And so like often you can't speed. You're on the 405 or whatever, yeah. the 101. And it's like, they're not out there looking for people. That. It would cause problems in traffic for Total. sure. That's right. Yeah. And even like on that section of the five Camp Pendleton, which you drove through today, like it's pretty empty. Like it's just, it's not worth their time and effort to give. It's better to just go after like crazy reckless driver type people. Yeah. We drove 30 kind of over, 30 over on the way here in front of a cop with the radar. We drove by him. I was like, okay. <laughs> He's going to come. He's gonna- we were going 80, <laughs> we were going 85, 86 in a 50. And this guy had, no, no, no. We were going. 93 oh, but good. what is that 40, none of this happened 38? in America this was in, he was coming from Mexico to yeah to yeah get... yeah did not happen here we swear but yeah and then they just go oh because we're in LA they're like we have to go catch the real criminals <laughs> right yeah yeah. I, I've never had a ticket in California actually although I really do think most of my driving here is done like I go up to LA all the time and mm. you're on the 405 I mean you're just it's a 73 you're just not you can't speed that much no it's yeah. not life it's, it's a self it, it, it fixes itself I, we go out it. my buddies and I go out to like the, the, the mountains in the mornings you know and, and Sunday mornings and like do mountain drives um, and that's where we really get on it but it's 7am and no one's on the road and I think that there's like an understanding between the police and like car enthusiasts that like we'll give you till 9 oh okay okay <laughs> after that oh, we'll be back out there but I, I feel like that exists in one way or another because now there's like uh, now at least in Orange County and stuff a lot of people have been complaining about cops getting uh Really on people for like front plates, like kind of like raiding, like uh, I don't know these car shows and whatnot. But that's a whole nother side. There's definitely some some YouTubers I could name that, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, and some like go after police interactions because it brings clicks. Of course, of course. Yeah. But we love we love those people. We love them. I don't <laughs> love know, them I, all. I, I, <laughs> they're all our friends until yeah. the camera stops. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, but um, I also wanted to know too. Do you um do you edit all your own videos or did you at the beginning? Or? Yeah, no, I did um for years, and I actually stopped the week we launched Cars and Bids. It became clear to um, me like that week, like I can't do this anymore. Okay. And so I, I like probably you do. I get emails from people like hey I want to be your editor Mm -hmm. and I got one of those emails and it had been a year since that dude had emailed me and I just sent him an out of the blue email back like 
could you start next week? And he was like, yeah. He's like, I'm going to quit my job today. Yeah. He didn't, he still has a day job and he just does my stuff like nights and weekends, but oh, it worked cool. out great for him. And um, he does a great job. And so that was kind of the one thing that I've passed off. So my best friend reads my emails mm. and my editor who has now become a good friend. He lives here in San Diego also. He edits. And that's like on the YouTube side, that's my whole team. Okay. Because I know with the specifics of editing, did you kind of have to be like, you know, it's kind of like handing off the, the child. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, for years, I thought I was the only one who could do it. <laughs> And I remember I went on Farah's podcast, Smoking Tire Podcast, and I told him that. And he was like, dude, he literally says, you can look this episode up. It was a couple years ago. He literally goes, dude, he's like, really? You thought you were the only one who could edit these videos? He goes, bro, it's not Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, damn, yeah, he's, right. he's right. That's like me. I roll up to people. I'm like, oh, you know, you got the cha-ching. You, you know, you get the captions going. Right. Yeah, not just crediting uh, any editors that I have or anything no, like that. No, it, it, it actually is incredibly useful. And he could do a lot more than he does. But I told him I need to maintain this, like, style totally. that people are used to. The fonts. Right, everything. exactly. And so he yeah. does that in a great job. And he's probably sitting there being like, we could do drones out here. We could do so much more. But yeah. he also understands that, like, part of what has built this channel is, like, kind of this fairly simple style totally. but it's like hugely content heavy yeah and so people like it it's familiar it's, yeah. it's nice and it's like not too like flashy and whatnot it's just like you get to like the cars you get to exactly every specific little thing in there deep dives into the cars yeah. which i think a lot of people you know i always tell people the biggest secret for youtube is like make the content that you want to make instead of or make the content that your audience wants to see instead of the content that you want to make and a lot of people are like they get a lambo let's go drive it and have fun mm -hmm. and like my, i get a lambo and i take it to like a secluded parking lot and it sits there for five hours while i shoot you know clips of the window switches but that's what people wanted to see that's yeah. what i learned like they wanted to see that that like the deep dive stuff that you can't really see on a lot of channels that only drive the cars. Okay. Cause I was reading somewhere that you, um, I was actually on a, one of your Reddit uh, AMAs, uh, that, um, you, you said that if you try to film in like a public area, people will like run up to you every second and try to interrupt you. Have you ever tried this? Uh, I guess no. you do shorter content. Oh, yeah, no. Like, well, actually, yes. Like, if I'm at a car show, I'll see, like, a Ferrari go by, and I'll be like, oh, and someone will be like, hey, excuse me. And I'll be like, oh, fuck. You know, yeah. like, yeah. But, but for you, it's even more. Annoying. For me, it's worse. Honestly, it's not It's not fans that are the problem. It's not people who recognize me. It's I go to a park in L.A. to mm. shoot a car that a viewer gave me. So he only has, like, a house and a driveway. He doesn't have, like, a location for me to shoot. So I take it to a park, and, like, people show up. And they're like, hey, what are you filming? Oh, you filming God. a commercial? And I'm like... <laughs> Get out of here. Like, this is my seventh take that I've just screwed up. And then you walk in. Get the hell out of here. How, uh, <laughs> how many takes are you, is it? Um, like, per shot, are you now so good that you can just get it off the rip? Yeah, mostly. But okay. it's still, you know, you get behind a camera and, like, oh. there's some pressure. And it's hard. And, like, so you the last thing you need is more distractions, you know? Yeah. And so, like, a dude drives by in a motorcycle with a loud exhaust, and I'm like, cool, bud. Yeah, you know, the we're airplane. all happy about your exhaust. Airplanes, oh. weed whackers, or, or, like, leaf blowers. Oh, oh my. God. I, I've done a couple <laughs> car reviews, and I'm telling you, I am the worst. Like, not, like, full scale, just kind of like, oh, I have a car. Like, here's, uh, you know, here's what I think of it. I've done, like, two or three, and it is so hard to get the little 650 horsepower, yeah. and especially that, on that TikTok. That was hard. And that's right, because TikTok, so fast. you got to go fast. I watched that guy on TikTok. Who's that black dude who just does, like— Oh, uh, Forrest Auto Reviews. His reviews he's are the man. unbelievable. Yeah. Because he sits there and just—you watch—I don't know yeah. how many takes he does. I've seen him do it. it he's a master. He just does it, you know, quick. Does he— in one take, do all that stuff? I, I, watch, I was in one of his reviews uh, a year ago, and he was pretty much flawless. He's just a wizard. He's a I mean, wizard. he must be. Yeah. It's Because I watch it, and he's like, and it has this and this, and over here is this. And I'm saying this, and it's hard. And he's saying like, and it has a CD changer, and it has an iPod, <laughs> and then it has a heads-up display. And he's like pointing to it all in perfect succession. And I'm yeah. like, that, that stuff is tough for sure. Um, it's easier on YouTube. You can do a lot of editing and people forgive you for it. On TikTok, you can't have like a million jump cuts because the video itself is pretty short. And no, so no. you kind of have to just get it. And it's like, wow. So do you focus on TikTok at, at all for the most part? I don't have, no, I have a TikTok, but I've never posted. But I think we're going to start okay. doing that now with Cars and Bids. Um, mostly because it's not monetizable really. Yeah. And 
I have never taken like sponsorship really. And so the only way to really monetize TikTok is to do like sponsored yes. stuff. And I've always felt weird about like sponsored content because I've always felt thought of myself as more of a journalist who's like giving real good. And so I didn't want to like get paid by anybody totally. while I'm giving like journalistic advice. Because you can't really like there's a buy you can't right, you can't get paid twenty get, grand for exactly. a video and then be like it was a three it was out great. of yeah or, or, or it was great yeah. Yeah, that or thing. say it was either one would be bad. And so, so do like, you ever do brand deal? Like you've never really done them. I've done a few like brand deals, but only if it's completely irrelevant to the product. Like if I'll do like a um, like a camera mount inside, like on a in an interior, you know, okay. Okay. completely unrelated to like cars. I could, will never take money from the automakers in any capacity or anything oh. even related. That's great. because if you do that, then it's like I can't really trust this guy. And I've always felt that one of the reasons my channel has lasted for so long is because people know like this dude isn't on the take and he yeah. mm -hmm. we can trust him to give us information that like is not you know being paid for totally. and i think so like i've i've neglected doing some getting some more money up front which i could have but i think it's benefited me like in the long term more because gotcha. the trustworthiness is is there that makes total sense yeah back in the day when you were working your nine to five job yeah what was it like quitting that job and moving to YouTube full time. Is that the order that you did? Sort of. I actually quit that job. I quit that job in January of 13. And then I, I didn't really, and then I, I quit that job to write at the time you could like blog. And that was like a thing. Now okay. that's like largely been replaced by video. You get paid to blog. I was getting paid. Yeah. So oh, cool. I quit the job in January of 13, wrote about cars for a couple years, started YouTube really like earnestly in the summer of 16. So there was a couple years in between. Okay. And then it just kind of blew up from that. But what was it like to quit? I mean, it was insane. It was it was really stupid. And I have a little baby now, and I, um, I my wife has a PhD, and I sincerely hope that my baby follows my wife's path instead of like dad who like quit his good desk job and like went to make YouTube content. Like that's yeah. not a real path. Nobody do that ever. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I, same thing for me, desk job and quit, but it was scary. It, it was so scary. And you'll look back at it when you're my age and be like. I can't believe I did that, but yeah. it worked for us. Is a lot of people it doesn't work for. Totally. Were you making money though when you quit the job? Or I just... was. I was already making money writing about cars, and so it wasn't okay. that scary of a transition. It was like, hey, I was actually already earning more writing about cars than I was at the desk job. Okay. But okay. it was still a loss of you know one of the incomes, and it was a risk because like the desk job, I I would honestly my colleagues coworkers are all still in those jobs. Yeah. Like, I could have been there forever and just been like, have like yeah. a normal life. The healthcare too. Yeah, right. And, yeah. and so leaving was a big risk, even though I was already earning good money, it was still a big risk because it was like finally jumping off this prescribed path, like doing well in high school to get into a good college, to get a good job. And it was like, yes. now I'm leaving that behind. How old were you in this? 20? I was, I was in, uh, I left the job in end of 12. So I was 24, which is the time to do it. Okay, you know? That's what I, yeah. We did the same thing. Yeah. Right. Nice. I'm, Hell yeah. <laughs> And, and that's the right time to do it if you're going to yeah. do it. Because, and then sometimes it works. Yeah. And like it's... You go back to the job. Yeah. You can. That's I'm not talking like I'm like a wise wizard or something. I was scared shitless too. No, but you can go back to the job. Yeah. That is the wise thing to think because I think a lot of younger people, 21, 22, 23, they, they, they've taken this career path and they thought to themselves like, I have to do this because mm. the, if I... If I go pursue a dream and it doesn't work that I'm screwed. And it's like, no, you're yeah. not screwed. You can always go back. I think you're screwed if you're like, say you have kids and you're like 35 like or like 40 you and then you're like, you let me You cannot do yeah. it in this stage. I have two mortgages. I have a child. Yeah. Like you can't quit today. And a lot of yeah. people are like, oh, I'll do it when I build up more money and like when I'm in a safer financial position. And it's like, you won't. You gotta take the then risk you're going to have a, a house and a wife and a kid and you're, then you will definitely not want to take that risk. Yeah. Maybe if you're, I guess if you're like a single person with like money built up, but I feel like for most people, yeah, you have like the early twenties. That's risk. The time. That's My the parents time. were like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, I'm 24. I'm, did, I'm fine. Did, how long did it take them before they accepted it? Okay. Well, the thing is I was making more money. Basically, I, I Snapchat's how I make the majority of, back then, the majority of my income. And I remember I got my first check from Snapchat because they don't tell you how much you make for the first two months. It's like hidden. I So I was making 45K a year working this financial advisor job at Charles Schwab doing like, you know, just desk job stocks, you know. And I get my first check in, and it was like 30K for one month. Oh. And I would literally look at the email and I was like, this is fake. Like this, this is wrong. And I see that it's split and that's after the split. So I was like, I'm quitting my job today. Nah. Yeah. Did you literally? Then? Uh, no. So I, I actually waited. I was really conservative with it, but I, I waited and then I got the next month, which was another 20 K. So at this point in two months, I had made my annual salary. salary right. So I was like, okay, if this doesn't work, I have a full year to get back to where I was. 
And then I told my parents and they were like, no, no, don't do it. And then it took them like, I don't know, like they're older. My dad's 72. My mom's 63. So they were like, oh gosh. Uh, it took them at least three or four months. And I kept, I mean, started making more and more. And I was like, okay. But so only within a few months, because you were able to prove pretty quick, like, hey, look at the checks. Like I'm making. Yeah. I mean, I think so like funny. once you have like one or two years salary under your belt, it's like, I could like, yeah, show I could, for if two I, it could screw, I could blow it all up and it would still, I would, I would go back to. Yeah. Did you, so you like went to, you went to the University of Arizona, you went to like a Harvard good. Harvard of the West. No, right. it's, it's not. Went, it's but, but like, that's like a good school that I'm sure your parents were very proud, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And so then like you finance were like, hey, like, I'm quitting. No, then they were like horrible because my whole dream job was to be a financial advisor and I was on the path to do it, like getting my brokerage licenses. And they were like, no, like you did, you did so good. You were so close. And I, I just quit before I got my final license. And they were like, what the hell is wrong well, with you? If it, not yeah. that it means anything for me, but I think you made the right decision. <laughs> I'm glad, I mean, for most people though, I feel like it is kind of like, Ugh. but I, I got, but I also quit when I had like 8 million followers on TikTok. So I was like, eh, easy fine, at that point to be able to, yeah. Like it's easier to yeah. be able to be like, Hey, the LA move earlier would have been sus, but yeah. All right. Thank you so much for coming on. It was a blast. Yeah, totally. Thank you for having me. All righty.